Good morning, everyone. We'll get started. Uh, my name is Craig Morris. I'm a senior program manager with the enterprise client management team. I've been working with uh, SMS and, and everything else in that nature since S uh, SMS 2003. Uh, the session today, we're going to be covering how to set up all that magic that you saw in the keynote with regards to configuring configuration manager to connect to the Windows Intune service. Rami, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Ramya Chitrakar, software developer in the enterprise client team, same as Craig. Good morning, everybody. All right, so she actually knows how it all works, and I just pretend to make it look like I know how it all works. So, All right, let's get started. So there's three sessions at TechEd this week that kind of cover all of the stuff that we saw in the, in the keynote and the foundation session. First session we're talking about is the one that we're doing right now, which is the infrastructure setup. So how do we connect Configuration Manager to the Windows Intune service? Second one is later today at 5 p.m. is going to cover the settings management side of uh, device management as well as enrollment, and they'll talk about how to enroll the various types of devices into the service. And then on Friday, we have application management, and application management will cover all of the application model, how do we manage PCs, as well as how do we manage Mac, as well as these mobile devices. So make sure you go to all three of these sessions. It'll give you a broad coverage of this unified device management of which we talk of. The agenda today. So we're going to do some, just some covering of, of ideas about how we got to this space. Why did we start going down this path of, of linking both a cloud service uh, to an on-prem service and to enable you to do unified device management? Then we'll talk about actually how do we log on to the Windows Intune service um, and get those credentials that we need to connect your on-prem infrastructure for Configuration Manager. Cover a little bit about Active Directory and Azure Active Directory and how do we connect those two up. Uh, for those of you that are already using Office 365, some of this may be repeat, but I want to make sure that when we're setting up this environment, we think about all those peripheral things we need to set up as well. Um, and then we'll go into the last bit, which is talking about how do we actually go into the Configuration Manager console and set up this, this new connection and this new service to allow you to manage these devices. And then lastly, we want to just cover some things that we've done in this demonstration that you'll want to do if you're doing a demo environment of a proof of concept type lab that may be different to a production environment. So we'll cover some of the, the differences there as well. Okay. Just a show of hands, how many use it currently using Configuration Manager 2012? Awesome. How many are still using 07? Excellent. How many are using 03? <laughs> <laughs> That's good news. I mean, you know, in the last couple of years, we've, we've definitely seen that transition. So it's, it's great to see a lot of you already using 2012. Um, so some of the concepts that we'll go through should already be familiar with most of you. All right, so just to kind of give you an idea of, of where we're going and, and how we got here, when we talk about today's challenges, there's a number of them, and I'm just going to bring all of this up here rather than the build slide. So there's kind of four areas of, of challenges we have in today's marketplace, and most of these probably are not new to to a lot of you. Uh, first of all, users expect to use uh, and have access to their company apps and data wherever they are and always be connected. Um, I'm sure most of you will not be able to sit here and not check email for 75 minutes. So um, it's a proof point there that most people are used to being connected anywhere at any time. Explosion of devices. All right, so when we first built you know, SMS 2003, uh, we pretty much had to concentrate just on PCs. Now, that's no longer the case, obviously. We have these devices that are coming in from all over the place. We've moved away from a standards-based approach for IT. We used to try and lock down these devices. You could only buy three or four different platforms. Um, we've definitely moved away from that to the point that now the users expect to purchase whatever device they want and be able to have access to those applications and data. And then we talk about applications and data. Obviously, we want to make sure that whatever device the user is using, they still have access to the applications that they need to do their job. Because at the end of the day, that's what our job is all about, is making sure the users of the company can get their jobs done. So you know, we used to just have to worry about MSIs and EXEs and, and maybe even AppV. But now it's a whole new ball game. And when you go to the uh, application management uh, session later, uh, later this week, you can see all of the various types of uh, installations we have for the various platforms. While we're doing all this and we're making these users have, have access to the applications, we also need to make sure that we're protecting the corporate data. 
So at the end of the day, that's what the company cares about, is making sure that they're protecting their IP, making sure that you know, those machines are locked down. If they get lost, that data is not lost, et cetera. So those are the kind of four challenges we're faced today, which is definitely, now when we started building 2012, uh, Configuration Manager 2012, and we took this, this people-centric approach, or we used to call it user-centric, but now we're people-centric. Um, big change, I guess. Uh, you know, we really thought about putting the user at the center of the universe. We always talked about that we wanted to make sure that user X could get app Y. Um, and that's kind of, we've continued that story, I guess, for, I guess we've been working on 2012 for five years, so seven years all up. So how do we provide this functionality within Microsoft? We're really focused on making sure we have a, a unified uh, configuration, right? We want to make sure that, you know, with all of these users, devices, apps, and data, you have a single point of, to manage all these information. First of all, we want to make sure that your end users have a consistent experience. So that regardless of what device they're on, how they're going to get that application, they have a consistent experience, it's familiar to them, there's not a whole lot of new learning that they need to go through in order to, to access those applications and those data. Second of all, we want to make sure we're not having to retrain your administrators, right? The last thing you want to do is every time you bring a new device type in there or a new platform, you need to retrain your administrators. So we want to make sure that they're provided with a consistent experience as well. They have a single point, a single pane of glass, if you like, in order to, to manage their environment, regardless of whether these are mobile devices, these are PCs, Mac devices, Linux servers, etc., you can manage them all from a single console. And then we want to make sure, obviously, we want to protect the data. So managing all those settings that, that secure these devices, make sure that if those devices are leaving your environment, we have the ability to pull back the data that's put, put down to those devices. Uh, also making sure we have a single, single point of access. So being able to do a single sign-on, for example, regardless of whether you're using an on-prem application or an on-prem service, or you're using a cloud-based service, the end user, the administrator, has a single sign-on point so they're not having to remember the 25 passwords they need for the various services. So when we think about client management, we essentially have two, uh, feature, uh, two products that we can provide. Um, so just as a note, uh, probably in the uh, probably year, 18 months ago, we used to have two products from Microsoft, Windows and Tune and Configuration Manager. And they were built by two different product groups. In the last 18 months, we basically merged those two product groups together, so they're both being developed by the same product group. And so when we talk about scenarios we want to enable for these two products, it's basically the same team that's building them. So you'll see a lot of convergence um, and a lot of consistency as these two products move forward. When we're doing mobile device management and unified device management, you have two options. You can use Configuration Manager, which, which a lot of you already know and love, and we can connect that to the Windows Intune service and that, that'll scale up to 100,000 mobile devices in addition to your existing three, 400,000 devices. Uh, it provides that rich set of functionality you've come to expect from Configuration Manager, role-based administration, PowerShell scripting, uh, extensible reporting services, et cetera. The other option you have is if you, if you don't necessarily want to deploy a on-prem configuration management uh, solution, you can use a cloud-only based solution for, for smaller enterprise customers. So up to 7,000 devices and 4,000 users. I mean, you don't have to deploy any infrastructure on-prem. It's all driven from the Windows Intune service. Provides similar sort of functionality. It provides endpoint protection, um, Windows updating, software distribution, settings management. Probably not at the scale you, you would expect from Configuration Manager, but for, for those smaller cust enterprise customers, it, it definitely provides a, a key value there. Okay, so how do we connect these two systems together? So basically what we wanted to do is make sure that the IT Pro had one admin console. He's connecting to Configuration Manager server um, on-prem, and then that's connecting to the Windows Intune service. This allows us to manage all those Windows PCs, Windows to go, Windows Embedded, which I forgot to mention earlier, Mac OS, uh, Linux servers, as well as all the mobile devices. So Windows R 8 RT, Windows 8.1, both PC and RT, as well as Windows Phone 8, iOS, and Android. So all of those devices are being represented in a single administrative console for Configuration Manager. The reason we chose to go down this path is the Windows uh, in Intune service itself allows you to connect to those devices anywhere in the world. So you don't need to necessarily have those devices don't need to be on a corporate network. 
as long as they have internet access, they can be managed. You can provide the applications and data that you need to those users on those devices. So what are the integration points? Well, and as I said, Windows Intune provides a cloud-based infrastructure. It allows us to deploy both settings and software distribution to those mobile devices, similar to how we do software distribution and settings management for configuration manager for those other devices, such as PCs. And as I said, all the administrative tasks are performed in the Configuration Manager console. When we're setting up the environment, we will use some of the admin consoles for the Windows Intune service. But once that's up and running, all of your administration will be done through your familiar Configuration Manager console. Platform support. So the list here, the ones in white, that is what is provided in SP1. That's shipped uh, December, January uh, this past year. The ones in yellow are what are shipping with uh, Configuration Manager R2, which will be shipping later this year. Um, the, as Brad announced, the preview of that is now available this week, so you can go and download that. So with SP1, we had Windows 8 RT, WinPhone 8, iOS 5 and 6 uh, OS platform support. Uh, we had some degree of Android support, but we've also built into that now a, a native Android um, solution for 2.1 and above. And obviously, with, with R2, we support the latest and greatest uh, Windows operating systems, so Windows 8.1, both uh, x86, x64, and RT. From a feature perspective, okay, we do uh, over-the-air in, uh, device enrollment, so no longer need to worry about uh, doing active sync or anything like that. It's just all over the air. Uh, we can provide, same as what you have with a PC, we can do available software distribution. To those, to those devices for the user. So the user is able to go into a self-service portal, find the applications that, that are specific uh, for both that user as well as that platform. They're only going to see the apps that are available for that platform. They'll be able to install them, um, regardless of whether they are applications that are side-loaded or available in the public store. If you make them available to them, they'll be able to install them. We do both user and device settings management. So you're able to set up, for example, how long email, uh, how long uh, pin numbers need to be, turn off cameras, whether email attachments are able to be downloaded, et cetera. Device inventory, we get some degree of, of inventory from these devices, spe specifically hardware inventory. Um, these devices obviously don't have necessarily the rich level of, of inventory you would expect from a PC, but they give you a lift to know exactly what type of information is available on that device. Um, and we can do some degree of software inventory as well, as far as the applications that we've made available to those users. So you may not be able to necessarily inventory Angry Birds, unless you made it available to your users, but you can certainly see what applications they've installed that you've made available to them. We can do remote uh, device retirement. So this removes it both from the configuration manager environment, so you no longer have to see these devices that the user has, has retired. Um, so they're not going to stay in the database for a long period of time. As well as doing remote device wipe. And this can be initiated both by the user or by the administrator. Uh, with SP1, we did full wipe, which is essentially setting, setting the device back to, to factory resets, if you like. With R2, we also added selective wipe. And depending on the platform as to, to how uh, capable that selective wipe is. Some of the new features we added for R2. Uh, we added additional company branding. So we had company branding similar to what you had in 2012 for the, the software catalog. We extended that to, do, to add additional branding to the self-service portal. We also added some new application types to support these platforms. And we also added VPN, Wi-Fi, and certificate profiles. So as part of the enrollment of that device, they'll also get policies that allows them to then have profiles for VPN connection and Wi-Fi, as well as other cert profiles. And we add additional settings. So as, as these uh, platforms mature, we continue to add more and more settings as they, as they are made available by the platform. OK, so that was kind of a quick introduction kind of, 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 of what the uh, solution actually encompasses. What we're going to do now is change tacks a little bit and talk about how do we actually go about setting up this environment. Um, and we'll get started on that. So we spent a lot of time hang on, you clicker. Broken. OK. So this is kind of a, a high-level view of the rundown on how we actually go through the process of setting up an existing configuration manager environment to the Windows Intune service. First four bullets are all about setting up your environment for Active Directory and Azure Active Directory. 
So first of all, you need to create your Windows Intune account. We'll talk about how we go about doing that. Then we'll talk about some of the DNS, the public DNS settings you need to set. This allows the user's uh, devices to discover the enrollment process, uh, as well as making sure that when we synchronize the users between on-prem and, and cloud Active Directory, that the users are uh, discovered and identified the same way. We then talk about our Active Directory Federation services. This allows the user to have a single sign-on. It's not required, but for most of you, you'll find that after you manage two passwords, both for cloud-based AD or Azure AD and on-prem AD, you'll get very sick of doing that. So you'll probably want to set up uh, Active Directory Federated services. Uh, then the last thing we want to do is set up Active Directory Directory synchronization. This just synchronizes those users uh, to uh, Azure AD. And then lastly, we get to do the exciting part, which is setting up Configuration Manager and connecting it up to Windows Intune. OK, so getting an account for Windows Intune, uh, you can get that either through your volume license process you normally go through for any other so software purchases for Microsoft. If you don't have a volume license agreement, you can also go to the windowsintune.com website and sign up for an account there. Once that's done, you'll log on to the account.manage.microsoft.com. This is your account portal. This allows you to set up and manage which users are being managed by the service, uh, as well as manage the domains um, and set up ADFS and DERSYNC as it is associated with Windows and Tune. Okay. And we'll go, when we go through, we'll actually have a demo and, and kind of walk you through um, some of that information on there. Verify public domain. Um, so when we actually synchronize the, the users, we want to make sure that we identify them both for Config Manager and Windows and Tune, that the user is exactly identical. And the way that we do that is we're keying off um, the UPN, the universal principal name of the user. So we want to make sure that those two names match so we can actually recognize them both on-prem and in the cloud. In order to do that, we need to make sure that Intune actually has a, a public domain. You can add multiple of these public domains. This is the domain that yeah, your company is typically known by. So if you go to a public DNS server and type in company1.com, for example, that's your, your, your public domain. So we need to make sure that we've added that to the Windows Intune service. The other thing we need to do as far as a, a DNS record is make sure we've created a enterprise enrollment DNS record or a CNAME record that uh, redirects the enterprise enrollment to manage.microsoft.com. When we go through the demos, we, our environment, our demo environment, we don't have a public DNS name. Uh, we also don't have a, a CNAME. So we'll show you some of the ways that you can get around that for a, a lab environment. But when you're going through that uh, in a production environment, you'll want to make sure that you set these up. Before we go th any further and start setting up uh, ADFS and setting up DERSYNC, the other thing you want to do is go into uh, AD on-prem and make sure that the, universal, uh, the user, principal. user principal name, I keep saying universal, user principal name, uh, is actually maps to that public domain. So you can see in our example here, we have admin at company1.com. That was the same public domain that we had when we were on the previous slide. You can either do this through ADFS, ADSI, uh, through a script, or you can actually do it for your entire organization. And when we go through the demo, we'll show you exactly how to do that. Once that has been configured, that way you make sure that your, uni uh, your UPN on your on-prem is set to the same thing that you're expecting to see uh, in the cloud. The next thing you want to do is just run your typical user uh, Active Directory user discovery for Configuration Manager. This will make sure that Configuration Manager retrieves the same user, uh, user information that you're then going to synchronize in the cloud. Some of the links here, I've given you a bunch of TechNet articles. So as you go through this deck, uh, when you review it later, if you click on all these links, it'll tell you, how, you know, some of the step-by-step -step processes you can go to manage these things. So I wanted to make sure that if you took this deck away, that you'd, you'd still be able to go through the process and set up your environment. OK, deploy and configure Active Directory Federated Services. So if you're using Office 365, you may already set this up. But this, as I said, it allows the user to log on with their domain credentials, with their domain password. They don't have to worry about managing multiple passwords. Key thing with, with ADFS, the passwords are not passed over the internet. When a user logs on with ADFS, they're actually passing their password and user credentials back to your on-prem infrastructure. 
and then when they're passed, then the user or the device that the user is using is passed back a token. That token is then used for those web, web services, whether it's Office 365, Windows Intune, or any other um, web service, you're actually passing a token. So we're not actually passing around you know, domain passwords around the internet, if you like. Uh, once you've set that up, so I've got some steps here. There's some really good TechNet articles on how to prepare for single sign-on, as well as how you, what you need to think about when you're actually deploying single sign-on. Uh, we won't go into too much details here, but what we will show you in the demo is once you've got uh, ADFS set up so that your on-prem and, and cloud-based infrastructure is set up, you then go into the Windows Intune account portal and actually say that you're using ADFS so that the service then knows, rather than to expect the password, to expect the token instead. With ADFS set up, the next thing you want to do is then start synchronizing your users from your on-prem AD to your Azure AD. In order to do this, again, you'll download, you download a tool that's provided by Microsoft. You deploy that onto your on-prem environment. That essentially just does the synchronization between the two AD infrastructures. Think of it as you're basically setting up a publication in SQL, and you're publicizing your, your users uh, to Azure AD. And we're only synchronizing user attributes. We're not, again, we're not synchronizing the passwords. We're synchronizing the user attributes. And you can do some degree of scoping with, with Dersync as well. So you can scope it to an OU, um, I think also a domain as well. So the TechNet article I have here gives you a step-by-step. -step. It also gives you, a, it's a really good white paper on some of the considerations you may want to walk through when you're setting this up. And then the slide here that I show here is basically how do you tell Intune that it wants to subscribe to the Active Directory, uh, uh, Azure Active Directory publication of your users. So essentially, this is the, so you publicize it, which is like doing a SQL publication, and then this is a subscription that then goes to Azure AD and, and synchronizes those users down to the Windows Intune service. And we'll walk through this in the, in the demo. OK. If you're not using ADFS, you can actually, as long as you've set up Dersync so that Azure AD has your users and your on-prem has your users, you can actually set individual passwords for the users for Azure AD. The downside of that is now the user has two passwords they need to remember depending on what services they're using on that device. And that'll probably get old pretty quickly because you're going to have to maintain two passwords for every user. So it can be done. And when we, the way we've configured this environment, we've actually done that. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But generally, what you'll want to do is set up ADFS as well. Uh, Dersync synchronizes every three hours. So when you're, making, when you're adding a user to your on-prem AD environment, thing to remember is that it's going to may take up to three hours plus or minus five minutes for it then to be synchronized with the Windows Intune service to allow that user to then enroll a mobile device. So when you're, you're planning and you've got new employees starting or new employees leaving, um, or old employees leaving, I should say, um, something to think about is that you can do a forced synchronization if you need to, if you need to remove that user immediately. Um, but otherwise, it's going to synchronize every three hours, so, so plan accordingly. All right. That's enough slides for now. Why don't we, we jump into the demo and look at some of the uh, stuff we've just talked about. So, Ramya? All right. We've talked a bunch about the Intune account portal, so let's go ahead and launch that up. To access the Intune account portal, you log into account.manage.microsoft.com. For the purpose of the demo, I've actually created a trial account, and that's what you will do if you're setting up a lab environment for testing purposes. Uh, as part of the subscription, uh, you get uh, an Intune tenant uh, admin account, and that's what I'll use to log into the portal. Let me go and enter that. So the first thing we'll see uh, after logging into the portal is the profile. And this is pretty much all the information that you enter when you're creating your trial account. As you'll see, it's just basic information. Uh, there is no credit card that you need to provide uh, for your trial subscription, and that's pretty much it. So it's pretty quick to set up a trial account. Let's go back to the portal. And we'll look at a few of the concepts that Craig just uh, talked about. The first thing we'll look at is the domains. So as Craig mentioned, you need to have a public domain uh, that you could verify as uh, something that you own. And this is needed because uh, it's so that you don't enter any domain like contoso.com, which you don't really own. So this is used uh, to make sure that you actually own the domain that you say you do. By default, though, when you set up a subscription, you'd see that there is an onmicrosoft.com address uh, or a domain that you uh, get assigned to you. And that's what I'll be using for most of my demo. So this is the difference between production and 
this difference between production and, and a lab environment, you can just use the on Microsoft.com, but you'll need to make sure that your UPNs for your users on your on, on, on domain, on prem AD environment has the same UPN. So. Yeah. And I'll show you some tip, uh, tips and tricks about how you can do that in your lab environment uh, so that you can get up and going uh, pretty quickly. Now, say that I actually have a domain that I can verify. You click add a, uh, add a domain, and then let's say you enter contoso.com. What this really does is it creates a DNS record uh, in your domain registrar or hosting provider, and Azure Active Directory uses that to confirm that you own the domain that you say you do. And again, I'd like to re-emphasize, if you've done this once and you, for Office 365, you don't really need to do it again for Intune, and the same applies vice versa. Let's go ahead and hit next. So what this really, as I said, it does a verification uh, through the DNS record you create. And in the new wave of Intune, uh, we've had added another verification method, which is the MX record or the mail exchange record. But there are two mechanisms. The TXT record works pretty much all the time, unless you have some specific restrictions, uh, because of which you'll have to use the MX record. I'll go ahead and cancel. But the steps are described in pretty detail in the portal itself. Yeah, we won't try and claim that, that Yeah, that I, I don't really own Contoso.com. So. <laughs> Let's go ahead and remove that. OK. The next thing we'll use is the users. We've talked a bunch about single sign-on. So to reiterate, uh, you need two things for single sign-on. One is Active Directory Federation Services, or ADFS. And the second thing is Active Directory Sync, or what I'll call as DIR Sync uh, as a short form. Now, both of these help your end users to have the same identity. As Craig mentioned, you have the same uh, uh, account username and password to access uh, both your domain um, data and as well as the corporate data through Windows and Tune. So the, in order to set this up, the steps are listed in our TechNet articles as well as in the portal itself. There are prerequisites uh, that you need, and those are called out here. You deploy Active Directory Federation services, and then you also prepare for DIR Sync. All of these are listed here, and I'm not going to set up ADFS for the demo. So I will let you look at this when you go ahead and set up your trial account. The second step of this is the directory synchronization. Now, this I have set up already, but I'll just quickly walk you through the setup steps for them. Again, there are prerequisites that you have for DIRSync. And there's a DIRSync tool. Uh, this is the tool that Craig mentioned that does the synchronization. It's a service or a sync daemon which runs every three hours. And it does a one-way synchronization from your on-premise AD into your uh, Azure Active Directory. Now, I want to show you this tool real quick. But one thing that I'd like to point out is this tool should be treated with the same level of security as a domain controller. Uh, it's doing a sync of your users, so you want to make sure that you restrict access uh, to this machine, and it has to run on only one machine on your organization. And it cannot be the DC machine, the domain controller itself. So I have one such machine. So I will not finish the process, but I just wanted to show you that it's very straightforward to set this up. There are just about four or five steps that you need. The first thing that you do is that you enter credentials of your Azure Active Directory. And the point here is you use the same set of credentials that you used to log in to the Intune account portal. The second set of credentials that you enter here are credentials that have permission on your on-prem AD. We don't save any of this here or cache it, so you're good to go. And there's just about three steps, and you're done. Once you set this tool up, every three hours, you get a delta sync uh, of users from your on-prem AD one-way sync into the Azure Active Directory, and so into Intune. We cancel out of that one. We'll switch back to our Intune account portal. Like I said, for this demo, I've already went ahead and performed the steps. And that's why you see all the users. These are users which have actually synced from my on-prem uh, AD into Intune. Uh, just a point, note that there, for the purpose of this demo, I'm actually using the contoso.onmicrosoft.com address. Uh, in your, once you've verified a domain, you'll actually have your domain.com in this case. Yeah. So make sure you set it. That's why we talked about setting up that verifiable domain before you start doing DIRSync to make sure that when these users are then synchronized to the Windows Engine service, they'll come through with that extension of your verified domain rather than by defaulting to onmicrosoft.com. So, the reason I bring that up is as we're going through our TAP program with SP1, um, a few customers uh, 
got, this, got this, this, those steps out of sync, and this is what resulted. So then they had to go through and clean them up and then resynchronize and, and do that. So lesson learned from our TAP program is to make sure you've done that verifiable domain before you go and do the dersync. But the good part about that is that you do it once uh, and you could use it across Microsoft Online Services. And this applies to the domain verification, ADFS, Dersync. So it becomes easy if you have done it already for any of the other Microsoft Online Services. Yeah. Uh, now, if you choose to not do ADFS for any reason, uh, you have a tedious process to set the, reset the passwords of each of these users manually. You can do it uh, of two ways, one of, uh, one of which is through the Intune account portal itself. You can select one or multiple users. For instance, I want to change the password for a user called Brian. You search for Brian. You reset password. And this gives you an option to send an email to Brian uh, with instructions of how to reset the password. Brian gets a temporary password assigned, which will be displayed here. And once you're done, an email is sent to Brian, and uh, he can go ahead and set up, uh, reset the password for himself. That's about it for the Okay, portal. so I'll switch back. back. Okay. All right, so now we can get into actually talking about how we're going to configure Configuration Manager to then start talking to the Windows Engine service. At this point, just a quick recap, we've now synchronized AD to the cloud. Uh, we've synchronized our users to, to the cloud Azure, and we've also got that synchronization as for our password uh, federated services all configured. Uh, both Configuration Manager through AD User Discovery knows about those users, knows about that UPN, as well as Intune also knows that user by the UPN as well. So when we go through and actually configure the connection between Configuration Manager and Intune, we'll do a matchup of those two user IDs, and they should match, and that's how we can manage these, these users and devices. So we created two new objects, if you like, in Configuration Manager for SP1. One is called the Windows Intune subscription. This allows you to retrieve a certificate from the Windows Intune service that allows you to then connect the Windows Intune connector to the service. It also allows you to define which user collection you want to allow users to uh, manage their mobile devices. And you can also configure the mobile platforms you want to support in your environment. So maybe you don't want to support certain platforms. You only want to support some other ones. You can actually define which platforms are supported in your organization. This was all done with the Windows Intune subscription object. And then we have the Windows Intune connector. The Windows Intune connector is just a new site role. It basically makes the connection between the on-prem configuration manager environment and the Windows Intune service. The reason we separated these two out is that then allows you, if you need to move the connector from one server to another, or that server blew up, or something happened to it, you can move it without having to re-enter all of that information you've set up around the, the subscription. And then the other thing we have is obviously the Windows Intune service. This is not visible to the admin administrator. But the way I like to think of it, for, for those of you familiar with Configuration Manager, it essentially acts as a DMP, or a device management point. It provides the policy for both software distribution and settings management to those mobile devices, as well as retrieve the hardware inventory uh, files, the status messages, et cetera, and brings them back into the on-prem configuration manager environment. So it's not a lot of smoke and mirrors. It basically just think of it as you've got a DMP in the cloud, and it happens to be servicing these, these devices. Platforms and certificates. So each of the platforms generally has a different way of managing certificates. And some of these are, are required by default. Some of these are only needed when you're doing side loading of applications. So if you have applications that are uh, built in-house or you've purchased from a vendor and you're not going to necessarily install them on these devices through a public store, you would what we call side load these applications. For Windows Phone 8, you actually need a sem semantic certificate. There's a requirement by the platform in order to deploy the self-service portal application that Configuration Manager provides. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about lab environments when we get to that. But essentially, you need this certificate before you can uh, install the app that we use to manage these devices. For Windows, RT, et cetera, um, you only need certificates to do side loading of applications, line of business applications. iOS, you need a push notification certificate. The way you about go about, and we'll demo this in, the, in, in our 
and our demos, we actually have the way of showing you how to do this. But essentially what you do is you connect to the Windows Intune service. That gives you a certificate signing request. Uh, you then send that, to connect to Apple's site. You send, then provide that as part of your corporate um, ID. And they will send you back a Apple push notification certificate. You then load that into, into Configuration Manager. That allows the Configuration Manager and Windows Intune service to then connect to those devices and manage them. And for Android, we don't have any of those requirements. OK. So now we get on to the cool stuff that all of us in the product group have actually been working on, which is actually configuring um, all of this stuff. So you're all familiar. So you're all familiar with the uh, Config Manager console. The first thing uh, that I'd like to walk through is the prerequisites, uh, all of which Craig just mentioned. First is the user collection. So let's go to Essence and Compliance. What I've done is I've created a collection called Cloud Users, and I've added nine users for the purposes of demo. These uh, users are um, the users that I'd like uh, to enable for mo mobile device management. So if you take a look at the users, you'll see the, they look identical to what are uh, there on the Intune account portal. And that's because a uh, directory synchronization has run from my on-premise AD into Azure Active Directory. And also, to point again about the user principal name, or UPN, you can take a look at the properties of the user and confirm that the user's UPN is indeed uh, the, the one that you see in the portal. In my case, it's the onmicrosoft.com, and you can do the same uh, for your demo or lab environments. Let's cancel out of that. So that's the only collection that I need. I've added a couple of users to that. The second uh, uh, prerequisite that we'll talk about are all the platforms that Craig mentioned. So let's start off with Windows RT. The first is a code signing certificate, and you get that from, Microsoft, uh, from the Microsoft uh, website. The second thing is side loading keys. To create side loading keys, we have actually a node under application management called Windows side loading keys. You can create keys here, and the reason this is also provided outside of the subscription wizard is so that you can, uh, one, enter keys after, the, after you've set up a subscription. And second thing is you'd see a column here that says activations used. So it will tell you how many keys you've actually deployed on your devices and already used. The next platform we'll talk about is Windows Phone 8. Uh, for Windows Phone 8, you need to uh, have the company portal downloaded, and that is available to you from the download center. I've already downloaded the app, and you'll see that the Windows Phone 8 company portal shows up in the applications node. If you take a look at the deployment types, you'll see that there's a deployment type of type of Windows Phone 8, and this is what we'll use when we're setting up the connector. Lastly, yeah, so when, when those devices, and when a Windows Phone 8 device enrolls, we'll actually, as part of that enrollment process, then push down this application as part of that, that process. And um, when we go through the app management uh, session on Friday, they'll cover this probably in a little bit more detail as well as around, also around how to create uh, Windows Phone 8 apps. The last platform uh, that we'll uh, create prerequisites for is for iOS. And to do that, we go into uh, administration and cloud services. This is a new node we've added in R2. Previously, uh, these used to appear under hierarchy configuration if you're using SP1. So under Windows Intune subscriptions, there's an option to create an APNS certificate request. And this lists pretty much all the steps that you need in order to download the uh, certificate file that will be used by the connector. The first step is to get, download the certificate signing um, the request from Intune service. To do that, you just input the name of uh, a file right here, a certificate signing request file. Let's call it demo.csr. And you hit download. The credentials are, again, the same credentials that you use for your uh, Intune account portal, the admin credentials. This is going out and connecting to the Windows Intune service and pulling down that, that certificate. So. Let's give it a minute. It takes a little slow depending on the internet connection. Oh. Seems like the server is happy. I'm going to try it one more time.
There you go. You got the CSR downloaded. And the next step in the process is to access the Apple certificate portal. Let's go ahead and launch that to download the actual APNS certificate. And that's the prerequisite you need when you set up the connector. In this case, the Apple ID, uh, I use my own. But you want it to be something of a service account, so don't use your own Apple ID, because you'll have to periodically renew the certificate. So just like your Intune tenant account, it has to be uh, more of a service account. Don't use your own Apple ID. Yeah, so we, during our, another thing we learned during our TAP program is, is um, having a personal ID here is probably not the best of, thing, best of things to have, especially if people leave. So uh, make sure it's something that you might want to use more as a company account rather than a, a personal account to, to Apple. So. Okay. And these certificates need to be re, uh, renewed every year. So. As soon as you log in, you see there's an option to create a certificate. Let's go click that. Accept the terms. And then it's asking for the CSR file that we just downloaded from Intune. So let's browse to that. I called it demo. Once the upload succeeds, it, for some reason, gives you a JSON object. It's just a success notification. Let's just go ahead and save it somewhere. Close. And you refresh this page. Here you see the actual certificate uh, now ready for you to download. Let's save this certificate. There you go. And that's pretty much it with the prerequisites. So we can jump right on to create the uh, a Windows Intune subscription. To do that, you go again under uh, Cloud Services, Windows Intune subscription, add a new subscription. If you forgot to do those prerequisites, you'll notice on the front page we told you to go do them again. So. Yeah. So the second page is you, again, sign in with the same credentials that you use for your account, uh, te Intune Tenant Admin account. Now, I'd like to talk about this page a bit, because this talks about the MDM Management Authority. It's an important little checkbox that's out there. And what it says is that after I check this box and set up the connector, for the devices, the authority is SCCM. And I want to emphasize this because there can only be one authority for a device. So please don't do this on the Intune account portal because there is an option even there to set Intune as the management authority. You, once you set it up for unified device management, you want SECM to be the authority. And you cannot change this, at least not very easily, once you've selected one of them. Yeah, it basically requires a, a call to, to our support staff in order to change that. So if you're setting up your environments, especially your lab environments, uh, don't go into the Windows Intune admin portal and go sit, check the box to say use uh, Windows Intune as your management authority. You want to make sure you just go into the account portal for Intune and do the settings that we just showed you how to do, and then go into Configuration Manager and set up the subscription object. Okay. Again, something we learned in our TAP, TAP program. So we're logging on to Windows Intune through here again. What this is doing is actually retrieving that certificate that we then use by the, con uh, the connector so, um, during the connector setup. Site server role that allows you to then connect to the Windows Intune service. Guessing everybody's checking email while this is going on. Yeah. It's funny, you know, when you go through your, your tech check, these things always work fine when you guys aren't here. And then you guys all enter the building and start checking email over wireless, and these things take a lot longer. I don't know what's going on. Try one more time. This is probably a good filler time if you had any questions so far. Come on. There's got to be some questions. Yes, please.
Yes. Yeah. It, well, if you've got a, sorry, I'll repeat the question. So if you've already got a Windows Intune subscription and you're managing your devices by, by that means, um, yes, you will need to make a call to, to the support staff to change that. Now, that's only if you've already set up Windows Intune to do mobile device management. So if you're managing PCs with the Windows Intune service, that's okay because we, we do support them in parallel. So if you do have some P additional PCs, such as XP machines, that you're managing by your Windows, win by your Windows Intune service, or by the Windows Intune, um, you can continue to do that. It's just that if you've set the, the MDM, or the, the Mobile Device Management Authority, to Windows Intune, in order to switch that over. And the reason we have to do this is that we don't want to confuse the devices. The last thing you want to do is start setting policy once in Configuration Manager and once in Intune, the device ends up getting policy from both of those two services and then gets confused as to which one is actually managing them. So that's why we, you have to have one or the other. You can't have both. So, um, hopefully we can log into this because uh, it makes the demo a little bit more difficult if we can't actually set up the subscription. Okay, finally. So what this is saying is because I've run through the demo a few times, it's saying, hey, you already set up a subscription, but I created one and deleted one, so I'll just go ahead and say yes. I'm sure that I want to use this subscription as the valid one to connect to the service. Now, coming back to the collection, what you do is you enter the same collection that I talked about. I created a test collection called Cloud Users. Now, this information, as you would have seen in the keynote and couple of foundation sessions yesterday, uh, you saw the IW company, company portal uh, where you saw the company information and help and you enter that, that's the information that you enter over here. Let me go ahead and enter the name of the company. This is how you personalize that self-service portal experience for, for your company rather than just showing Microsoft all the time everywhere. Yep. So it allows your users to think, okay, I'm actually being managed by my company rather than somebody else. You pick a color scheme and I really like pink, so I'm going to use pink. Yeah. Magenta. Again, something we learned, actually something we learned in Configuration Manager 2012 is you need to be able to change the backgrounds of your self-service portals. Um, we have some large customers in America. One of them has their default color as blue. The other one has their default color as red. And if you don't provide both, both colors, um, they get a little upset if you have their competitor showing up on their self-service portal. So. so the site code is the site code of the... Uh, uh, primary site to which you want to assign the mobile devices to. So you can pick and choose, but it only has to be one of your sites. I only have one site. It's a standalone primary. So I'll go ahead and hit the one that I already, uh, this is the one that I'm going to use as my device. This is the site that my devices are going to be assigned to. Next, going through the platforms, I'll go ahead and enable all of these that I want to onboard all the platforms that are in there. I already got the code signing certificate so, uh, for Windows RT, so I'll input that. We already looked at the side loading keys in the other UI. If I choose to, I can add one more over here. So you don't have to add them in both places. places. If you've already added them in, into your Configuration Manager environment, you don't, need um, to add it you don't have to add them again through the subscription object. For Windows Phone 8, there's two ways of uh, providing the certificate. One is either through the PFX file or the second is you can directly input the AT or the application enrollment token in this uh, wizard. In my case, I have a PFX, so I'll choose to use a yep. PFX. So in SP1, we just supported the ability for you to add the, the PFX file. Uh, with R2, we added the ability to add the AET instead. And this just comes down to whether, you know, you, if you're a large company, you may have a separate, separate group or a separate person that's your security officer. They may just give you the AET or they may give you the PFX file, just depending on, on how... Um, trustworthy you are to them. Um, so depending on what you get back from your security department, uh, you can enter either one of those and it'll, it'll work just fine. Um, so just, just to point out the difference between SP1 and R2. And you enter the package, uh, the app for the company portal for Windows Phone, which I already showed you. So I'll go ahead and input that here. And for iOS, we went through the process of getting the uh, certificate or the APNS uh, certificate and we'll input that at this space. Now here, this continues the person, uh, personalization of the company portal. Yes, this is also new for R2. Um, for those of you using SP1, you didn't have this additional uh, customization. So. so you enter some information here that will show up uh, again on the side of your company portal and users are able to use the support information uh, for reporting any issues that they're facing. 
here you pick the company logo again to show up in your company portals you can choose to show the company name in your uh, company portal and that's pretty much it you go through and set up the subscription so once you've set this up once you don't have to set it up again and this is just this is either for your entire hierarchy or if you have a standalone primary, you'll set it up for that standalone primary as well. So you don't have to go through and set it up in multiple locations. Once it's set up, you've set it up and, and you're good to go. The next thing we'll need to do is then set up the connector that it does the connection then to the Windows Engine service. So this is go through and adding all that information to the configuration manager uh, site server. One important piece is, uh, since most of the information is in the subscription, there isn't really much, any, uh, much at all in the connector wizard, and you're free to move the connector outside of the subscription, as Craig mentioned. So. So let's go ahead and go to the connector wizard while that's running. Uh, to do that, you go to the regular place, which is site uh, servers and system roles. You will see that because I set up a subscription, a new site system starts appearing called manage.microsoft.com. And we'll talk a little bit about that because it's not really a site system. And uh, here is a warning, the subscription is finished, and it's warning you that you should set up a connector to make sure that your CCM is actually uh, talking to your uh, Intune instance. Let's go ahead and close that out. So about manage.microsoft.com. It is not really a site system. It is just the Intune services. And like Craig mentioned, it acts as a device management point and also as a cloud uh, distribution point for the app content or application content that you deliver to mobile devices. So if you take a look at this guy, it actually has distribution point listed out as its role, but don't try to install any other role on it. It's not really a site system. So for the connector, we actually install it on the physical site system, which is my machine right here. You add a site system role. So in this case, you can enter a proxy server because the connector does require outbound internet access to access Intune service. So if you have a proxy uh, server, please specify it here. Yeah. So if you've been using uh, 2012 RTM, you used to have to set up the, the proxy server for every single site role that you, as you went through. Uh, one of the changes we made while we were making the changes for this connector is, is move that from each of the site roles to the server itself. So if you're setting up a a bunch of roles on a single, uh, prox uh, single site server, you don't have to go through and enter that proxy information for every single role you're adding. You can just add it once, and then each of those roles will then use their proxy information. So, so that's why if you're using RTM, you're going, well, why am I doing this here and not doing it on the role? OK, so you select Windows Intune Connector as a role. And that's pretty much it. There's no other information that you need to set up here. That's yep. about it. The connector is set up for you, and that's all you need to do to connect your config manager to Intune service. Excellent. Thank you all. Switch back. Oh, that's right. I got the other button, too. Oh, four. Excellent. Okay. So while the connector is actually making connection to the site, the, the Windows Engine service, a couple of things to think about when setting up a lab. Uh, first of all, you can set up a Windows Engine trial account. That'll last for 30 days. When you're doing your lab environment, what I normally recommend doing is setting up all of your config manager environment in your lab, setting up your lab-only AD infrastructure, setting up DirSync. If you want to use ADFS, set that up as well. Get all of that configured first. Okay? Make sure that's all working. You can go out. There's a, a series of tools you can use, I think, from the Office 365 folk that also allow you to verify that DirSync has been set up correctly. With all that set up, then go sign up for a Windows Intune trial account. And you can then attach that Configuration Manager lab environment to your trial account. Uh, you still need DirSync. You don't need ADFS. Um, the other thing is, by default, you'll have the on Microsoft.com. So as we said, if you don't have a public verifiable domain, especially in a lab environment, just use the on Microsoft.com and make sure you go to your on-prem AD environment and set up the UPN for the users. You can either do this at a domain level or at individual user level. Set those up so that they map the ones that are going to be uh, automatically defaulted to in Windows and Tune. The last thing I wanted to, to talk about is and when we released SP1, uh, even in a trial environment, you still needed the semantic certificate to manage your mobile uh, Windows Phone 8 devices. We've, made a, we've created a new support tool for Windows and Tune trial. This is for the Windows 8 phone. And basically what we've done is we've provided that certificate that, that 
that you need, as well as some sample apps that allow you then to then push out the self-service portal app for Configuration Manager to those Windows Phone 8 devices, as well as some sample apps you can deploy to those devices so you can actually continue with your proof of concept without having to necessarily purchase uh, that Symantec certificate. Um, anything else we want to talk about in the lab? Um, I'll show a couple some... of the Okay. So why don't we jump on in and yep. talk about some of the troubleshooting as well as some of the things we do as far as a lab environment versus a production environment. So all you need is you go to windowsintune.com. Uh, you are having the option to set up a trial account, and that's what I did for this demo. It was pretty straightforward. You get it for 30 days. Uh, there's no credit card that you have to submit at this point. You get uh, about 20 GB of uh, space in Azure for your app content. So I would recommend that please give it a try. And uh, it's pretty straightforward, so give it a shot. Now, that's for the Intune, Windows Intune website to get the trial account. One a trick for the onmicrosoft.com. Since we did not set up a public verifiable domain, and that's if you have the scenario in your lab environment, what you could do is you go to your on-prem Active Directory domains and trusts. The only thing that I did here is in the properties, I added uh, the onmicrosoft.com as an alternative uh, UPN suffix. And once you do that, if you just make sure it's the primary one. So if you've got multiple UPNs, make sure that the one you're using to synchronize is actually the, the, the top level um, UPN. UPN. And you go to the user properties in your Active Directory users and computers. And for every user, you'll see in their account that you are now have two options. And like Craig said, if you select it to be the primary one, that becomes the default uh, UPN for that user. And that's pretty much it. Now, I'll jump into troubleshooting, yep. because that's pretty much all you need, the tips and tricks for the lab uh, setup, uh, what I went through, plus this trick for UPN. For troubleshooting, there, for connector, there's just three set of logs uh, that you take a look at, and they are along with your SCCM site server logs, the DMP uploader, the cloud user sync, and uh, DMP downloader. Let's take a quick look at the DMP uploader. All this says is that it's uh, connecting to the service every five minutes. And if there's any errors, you'll see them in here. Otherwise, this is how a typical connection looks like. It says it's connecting to the service. If there's anything to upload, like if there's a delta, it does a delta sync. So if you have new apps, uh, new settings that are deployed on the SECM side, they get uploaded every uh, five minutes. Similarly, the downloader log gets back state messages and compliance reports uh, from the service back into SECM. And that runs every five minutes by default as well. The last log is the cloud user sync. Now, the Intune users collection that you created, a delta sync is performed uh, to make sure that all the extra users that you add on your SECM side are validated as in valid Intune licensed users on the service side. And this component also periodically runs, so you can look for any errors in this log for user sync. That's pretty much it. And all right, so I was going to say, if we look at the, the uploader, we can see that it's obviously been able to connect to the service, which is always a good thing. So we've actually, I guess, proved through logs that we've actually set up that connection correctly. Um, the other thing is with the cloud user sync log, this is how it synchronizes those users up to the Windows Intune service. If you see errors in here, typically it'll be associated with it, the mismatch of those UPN names. And as you can see from here, I guess we synchronized a while ago, so. Been a oh, it's been a long time ago. Okay, so we've had, have actually, but you can see we've had successfully uploaded all of the users that are currently in that user collection that we set up in that subscription. All right. Uh, if we have some time, we can show enrollment. We do have some time. So, do you want to switch over to that yes, machine please. and show the enrollment? You've already seen the enrollment of uh, Surface Pro, which is Windows 8 8.1 in the keynote. Uh, what I'll do is I'll show you enrollment of a Windows 8 Surface RT. And then in the session later today at 5 p.m., they'll go through and show you the iOS enrollment. Um, Probably and, also the Windows phone. And maybe the enrollment. Windows phone enrollment as well. So they, they very much focus on the enrollment process as well as settings management. So this is the one we were allowed to present and not take their thunder. So. OK. So in case of Windows 8.1, you actually had a modern settings UI. But in Surface, you actually, it's, a company, it's, it's in the control panel. So to access it, you hit company apps. Shows up under settings. Launch that. It's asking for an email address. And this one is actually going to talk to the live service, uh, which is deployed in production. So I have a different account for that. I will enter my user credentials and password. And OK. 
Now, the reason we got this is at the very beginning of the talk, Craig mentioned that we need a CNAME record created in your DNS to redirect enterprise enrollment to manage.microsoft.com. And since I don't have that, I ha have to type in manage.microsoft.com in the server address. And this is probably what you need in case you are testing it out as well. So make a note of this. And that's pretty much it for enrollment. At this point, it's connecting to the service. It's authenticating the user. It's uh, validating that the license is right. It's deploying all the needed certificates uh, on this device. And lastly, it also brings in some default policies, such as what is the device supposed to connect to, how frequently does it have to connect to the management point, et cetera. But that's pretty much it for the, uh, the enrollment. OK, so we'll let that run. Switch back to the presentation, and then we'll we'll jump back and okay. show that it's running. It's going over the wireless as well, um, so it may take a little longer than we were expecting. Um, actually, what I wanted to do is actually exit out of here because I think what happened when we were doing this presentation and the clicker had a jump, it missed a slide. I wanted to make sure we covered. Oh, it's not. Oh, okay. Or it could just be hidden. So let's just unhide the slide and present the slide. Is the button. The enrollment oh. is complete, by the way. So. Oh, enrollment's complete? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I better switch. I'll switch back and show the enrollment's complete, and then we'll switch back to that slide. So, your enrollment is now complete, um, and now gives you the option to do the install of the management app. Right. Yep. And lastly, if you uh, bring up the same company apps again, it'll confirm, it'll show you that you're already enrolled, and that's the same place you would go to to unenroll your device as well. So, this time when we bring it up, it's going to say that it's already connected to the company, and you disconnect from your company network to do the unenrollment. Yeah. So when we're going, the, when the, they showed the keynote yesterday, yesterday they showed the yes. keynote. Um, you saw that you could actually join, and you could also um, become managed. This is the different UI that you had for for, for an eight eight, I guess a Windows eight, eight. RT device yes. versus a Windows eight point one device. So this is a slide that, for some reason, I guess the, the I double clicked on the clicker. I wanted to just point out, but as far as platform support, the type of agents that are being supported by these various platforms. So for Windows 8.1 PC, you can either install the Configuration Manager agent that we, we've all come to know, know and love. That gives you that reach set of functionality as far as customizable um, settings management, uh, full breadth of application management as well. Um, if you need something probably a little lighter on those PCs, you can also just use the, the OMADM agent and then that'll be managed through the Windows and June service connected to Configuration Manager. Obviously, it doesn't provide the same level of rich functionality, but if you have a number of these Windows 8.1 devices that are continuously roaming and are not necessarily connecting to your corporate network and you just need a, a light degree of management, it's definitely an option for you. The other ones we've added in yellow, so we have uh, the iOS native now uh, company application portal as well as an Android application portal as well, or uh, company portal. Um, we'll be demoing this in the other sessions. Yeah, that so the other guys in, in the other sessions will be demoing this. I just wanted to make sure we pointed out that we have actually, for iOS and Android, added the similar sort of experience you had with SP1 for Windows RT and Windows Phone 8, where they have a native uh, company portal application rather than connecting to, to a website. Um, and I also wanted to point out about the Windows 8 PC that if you just need you know, light degree of management capabilities, you can actually use the service uh, for those roaming devices that you have. And of course, I can't find the mouse. Okay, so we, we did yeah, that. So let's just jump back so, here. So really, just a summary of, of basically what we've done. So at this point, hopefully today, uh, we've, we've illustrated how to first set up the environment you need to set up in order to connect these two systems together, and then how to go through the configuration manager setup to then connect it to the Windows Intune service. Okay? Make sure you go to the other two sessions. That'll kind of tell you exactly how to do settings management as well as application management once all of this is set up. So uh, we've got uh, 10 minutes, which is what I kind of wanted to get to. So uh, happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, we'll be around as well if you need to. Question at the back. We need to repeat the questions, so if you could just yell out Speak and we'll try and repeat them. So uh, do we have mics? Mic, the, uh, do we have mics here at all? Because I can't hear a thing. Sorry. Is Intune able to report devices and groups? 
Approved. approved. Able to report devices approved. Sorry, you probably have to step uh, right in the front for us. Usually we have microphones in these rooms. Huh? I could walk. <laughs> Sorry. Devices mm -hmm. after activation that are in the Microsoft Active Sync quarantine. In the Active Sync quarantine. When you put a uh, when you configure a device via Intune, mm -hmm. you can put the Active Sync configuration to the device. Yep. And when the device connect first to Active Sync. Mm -hmm. to exchange, yes. the device can be put in a quarantine. Oh, uh, quarantine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, Craig, repeat the question. So, let me see if I can get, remember the question. Um, so, w with both Configuration Manager and Windows in tune, you can actually, when a device is going through Active Sync, can you actually then quarantine the device? Uh, yes, you can actually con uh, quarantine the device if you want to. You can I think you can... Uh, quarantine are based on platform. Um, I'm trying to remember if you can also do it on the OS version, but I think you can definitely do it as far as platform is concerned. Um, actually, that brings up another interesting point which we didn't cover is we didn't necessarily cover uh, Exchange Active Sync and, and, the in, and the way that it would necessarily work with this native MDM solution. With the Active Sync, one of the great things it does provide is it does provide you the, the ability to discover which devices are actually connected to your environment. Um, and actually getting email. So if you don't necessarily know, for example, which platforms or which users are actually connecting to your environment with these mobile devices, uh, ActiveSync provides a very complementary service to allow you to discover which types of devices are actually connecting to your corporate network. So we, what we recommend is if you're using Configuration Manager as, as your MDM solution, also make sure you set up EAS connectors um, to your Exchange environment so you can do that discovery as well. Oh. When I enroll a device yep. in Intune, mm -hmm. my device, uh, the po company policy in my company is only devices that are based in the mobile device management. We mm -hmm. currently use a product of BlackBerry for that. Okay. Uh, to to ensure only devices that are enrolled in the mobile device management mm -hmm. that are able to connect to Active Sync. That's the reason we put each device. Mm. They connect first time to active sync to an active sync quarantine. Okay, I, well, let's so, take this offline. I need to get some more details okay. before we try and solve it. But here. in general, you should remember that only the users and their devices uh, that are uh, marked as their primary devices, those are the ones that we automatically allow for enroll. I think his question is yeah, more. Yeah, no, about it's, a, it's a different question specifically around Intune. Okay. Um, so I need some more details yeah. before I answer the question. Come find so, us after and um, help you answer. Are there any other questions? Um, if not, we'll be around here a while and we can take that question uh, offline. Otherwise, thank you very much for attending.